Hello everyone, welcome back to day 16 lecture of how to learn DevOps and cloud computing in 60 days. As part of today's lecture, we are going to learn about something called GitHub runners. And we will also understand what are the different types of GitHub runners. And we will go ahead and then configure a self-hosted runner, uh, preferably in AWS cloud. And we will go ahead and then run our CACD pipeline or workflow in that self-hosted runner. All right, so let's get started guys. So what do you mean by GitHub runner? Your GitHub runners are nothing but it's a build agent where GitHub actions workflow is being executed. So you have two different type of GitHub runners, GitHub hosted runner and then self hosted runner. So what is the difference between these two? GitHub hosted runners are, you know, completely managed by GitHub where, you know, you don't have any control over. Whereas if you wanted to have more control over the build environment, then you can go ahead and then, you know, configure self hosted runner. Okay. So there are some pros and cons, which we'll actually discuss in the next slide. Once you configure your CACD workflow, if you wanted to run your build on any specific runner, you're going to use the keyword called runs on. Okay. And then GitHub hosted runners are completely uh, ephemeral. Uh, meaning, you know, whenever you actually, you know, run your CACD workflow, uh, GitHub is going to provision that VM on the fly and then it would run the entire build on that machine. And then after that, that machine would be gone, right? And then whenever the next build is happening, the process will be the same. So, so basically, right, how do you choose what runner you actually want, right? So it is purely depending on your needs. Okay, if you want to have more control, over the build process, then you can go for self-hosted runner. But if you don't want to manage the infrastructure, then you can actually leave it to GitHub itself. So now let's try to understand, you know, the difference between these two. I know we briefly discussed. So like I said, GitHub hosted runners are completely managed by GitHub where you have no control over. But if you want to have more control over your build agent, then you should go for something called self-hosted runner. So in the GitHub hosted runner, everything is kind of pre-installed, right? So you don't have any control over like I mentioned, okay? But if you want to set up a VM, you know, you want to take care of all the security and everything, then you would go with, you know, something called self-hosted runner, all right? And like I said, you know, uh, GitHub hosted runners are completely ephemeral, okay? So every time you run a build, it is going to provision a new VM and then run the entire job. Okay, whereas self-hosted runner is completely stateful, right? So you would always go for GitHub hosted runner if you wanted to run any job pretty quickly, right? So let's say that, you know, you are running your CACD workflow, which does not need any heavy, you know, computing, then you can simply go for GitHub hosted runner. But if you think that, you know, whenever you are running build, if it is taking, you know, a lot of time, if you want to have more customization, then you would go for self-hosted runner. All right. So in today's lecture, we are going to go ahead and then configure self-hosted runner. So in today's lecture, we are going to go ahead and then configure self-hosted runner. Fantastic. So now let's get started. Let's quickly go through the prerequisites. So we are going to create an EC2 instance in AWS cloud in order to configure that EC2 instance as our self-hosted GitHub runner. And we are going to go ahead and then install Maven on that machine. Why? Because we have already our Java project configured in GitHub. So that is actually nothing but this project. And we have already implemented CACD workflow for that project, right? So we are going to go ahead and then run this workflow on the self-hosted runner. Fantastic. So now let's get started, guys. So I'm going to uh, really show you guys how we can create self-hosted GitHub Actions Runner. It is pretty straightforward. It is not really complicated. So now let's get started. So let's go into our GitHub Actions. Okay, and then go to Runners and then go to Self-Hosted Runner. So we always have one available GitHub Hosted Runner for our repository. But we wanted to, you know, configure self-hosted runner. So go to self-hosted runner. So as you can see here, we don't have anything configured. Okay, so basically, you know, runners are nothing but 
virtual machines, right? So let's click on new runner and then click on new. So basically you have several options here, right? So you can go with Mac OS or you can go with Linux or you can also configure, uh, you know, any Windows uh, agent as well. But I'm going to go with the Linux option. Okay, and then you can also see very clearly here, they have already provided all the steps that you would need in order to configure your virtual machine as a build agent or runner. So now let's go ahead and then create a brand new EC2 instance in the AWS cloud. And then we are going to configure that EC2 instance as our self-hosted GitHub runner. So let's go back to AWS cloud, uh, click on launch instance. So I'm going to say GitHub runner and Ubuntu. I'm going to select Ubuntu server 22.04 AMI. And then uh, let's select uh, t.small. This is actually more than enough for this demo. I'm going to go ahead and then choose my existing key. If you don't have any keys, obviously, you know, you have to create uh, SSH keys. And then we don't have to open any port number. Uh, please, you know, understand that this is just a build agent. You don't have to open any additional port number other than port number 22. So using which we are going to securely connect from our local machine. And then I'm going to keep this root volume as 18 uh, gigabytes and then let's select the GP3. So everything is good over here. Let's go ahead and then click on launch instance. So now let's go ahead and then connect to our EC2 instance. Click on yes. Fantastic. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the steps here. So this is exactly what we are going to follow, isn't it? So let's go ahead and then create this directory called actions runner and then let's cd into it and then uh, this is actually uh, the step for downloading the installables okay so you can clearly see here right so let's go ahead and then execute that let's see there you go so that is the installable file fantastic and this is actually additional step if you wanted to you know execute that uh, you can do that. This is just to validate that. Okay, so we got the okay message. So that's good. And then let's go ahead and then, you know, uh, extract the installation file. So that is the command. I have already documented all the steps over here as well. Okay, so not a problem. So it looks like uh, we were able to extract so we should be able to see that folder here, right? So you can see here, um, we should be able to see all the files extracted here, isn't it? Fantastic. And then the next step is, you know, we need to go ahead and then configure. Okay, so you can see here, right? So create the runner and then start the configuration experience, isn't it? So let me expand this one real quick. So you can also see here, right? This already created, you know, token over here. Okay, and then you can also see here, uh, this runner would be applicable only to this repository, right? Because, you know, we are actually creating runner under this repo. So you have two options, right? You can create a runner uh, for your repository, or you can also create a runner for your organization. So this is my personal GitHub account. So I'm going to just leave it as it is. I'm going to, you know, uh, create this runner for my repository only. Okay. Okay. So let me copy this step. Go ahead and then execute that. Okay. And then it is actually, you know, asking for the name. All right. So let me go back to my documentation here. Okay. So let's give some name. So it is asking for the name of the runner group. So let me enter. And then it is asking for the name of the runner. So let me give my runner. Okay, or a runner one doesn't matter. And then it is actually asking for additional label. Let me also go ahead and then, you know, provide the same label, not a problem. Okay. And then it is actually asking for the work folder. So I'm going to go ahead and then, you know, enter. So that's it, right? So our runner have been configured. We are not done yet. Okay. We still have few things to do. So what I really wanted to do is, I actually wanted to configure a runner to run as a service. 
so you would not see uh, you know that type of instructions uh, you know in github repository right so you you see here right so they have not mentioned anything about uh, configure runner as a service but not a problem i have already documented over here why because um, if you don't configure a runner as a service every time you stop your uh, you know your vm and then restart you'll have to manually you know start the service okay but i wanted to configure runner to be you know running as a service so for that we have to perform additional command okay so if you actually see here so you see here right we are just going to go ahead and then you know invoke this particular command so let me just do that so i'm going to put sudo and then i'm going to go ahead and then execute that command so you can see here right so this has created you know symlink control fantastic clear the screen and then let's go ahead and then start the service there you go so you can also see here our service is actually started and then if you wanted to actually check the status you can go ahead and then run this command fantastic very good so now if i actually uh, go back to uh, github so go to uh, runners or click on here wow can you all see here is idle so basically our runner is actually up and running it is actually waiting for the job to be running right so you can see here right start a running a service so it is actually running fantastic okay so now what we are going to do is uh, let's go ahead and then run our CACD workflow so let me uh, go back to the repo so if you see here, this is a CACD workflow that we have already configured. Okay. So obviously, right, this is going to check out the code, uh, install Java, and then, you know, uh, perform build using Maven, and then it would integrate with SonarCube. And then this would also go ahead and then, you know, deploy, I mean, sorry, perform a quality gate check. And then this will also go ahead and then send a Slack notification, right? Okay, it's a very simple, simple workflow. So what I'm going to do is uh, now we need to uh, configure this CACD workflow in order to run on the self hosted runner, correct? So we are going to edit this. And then we are going to change this into self hosted. So now let me go ahead and then commit changes. I'm going to say build on self hosted runner, click on commit changes. Wow. So we should be able to see right away. There you go, guys. Do you all see here? Runner name is my runner and then that's the machine name. That is actually nothing but a private IP address. So let's quickly validate that. So you can see here, right? 172, 31, 81, 31. Yeah. Okay, I see that some error is there. Okay, there you go. So this is actually expected, right? So remember, I actually mentioned that we have to install Maven on the build agent. So apparently we actually missed that, though I have, you know, provided over here. So let's quickly fix that. Let's go ahead and then run this command. Okay, before that, let's just perform sudo apt update. Why? Because this is the brand new EC2 instance we just provisioned. So let's update to make sure that, you know, this has all the latest packages. So now let me go ahead and install Maven. Okay, so we can verify that Maven got installed. Fantastic. Let me go back to the workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and then rerun the job. All right, so our Maven build is success. Now we are into sonar cube scan and you can see here uh, this is actually failing. So it is actually looking for this particular utility uh, because it's trying to uh, download sonar scanner CLI and all. So what we will do is let's quickly go ahead and then install this utility on our build machine or the runner. So let's go ahead and then install and zip. Okay. 
fantastic so now let's go ahead and then rerun the build i'm sorry guys but uh, you know so that is how you know this actually goes so let me go ahead and then click on rerun so you can clearly see here obviously build is running on the runner fantastic so that's fine uh, the sonar cube scan is success but now we are getting into this error jq command not found okay so i think again the same problem we might have to install this particular utility let me actually quickly go to chatgpt we may have to install that particular utility there you go so this is for you know um, you know lightweight command line json processor so not a problem let me quickly install that okay so basically you know we are obviously using self hosted runner where you have more options to customize your build and we can clearly see that happening isn't it so let me go ahead and then you know rerun the job okay so sonar cube scan was successful now it is in the process of uh, verifying you know quality gate check let's see awesome guys so everything is green now and we should be able to see some message over here there you go you can see here we were able to send you know some kind of a notification uh, to you know slack channel and the moment you click on this link this will actually take you back to the cacd workflow right right so we were also able to integrate with sonar cube and then you know also able to uh, integrate with quality gate uh, check as well all right awesome guys i hope this was you know really useful so this is how you can actually configure self-hosted runner in github thank you so much for watching this video i'm really looking forward to meet you all in the upcoming videos thank you so much